everybody. Welcome, welcome. It is, it's Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday. We're at Wednesday. What day are we at? Is anybody else like, what day are we at? Between COVID and the holiday weekend, who knows what day it's at? We're just here together. I'm just happy to be here with you all. I've been thinking about you all a lot and I was really excited to think about getting you excited and getting you pumped up and having you feel excited to take on new results for this this season. My hair is kind of crazy today. Here, don't mind that crazy. It kind of has a mind of its own today. Um, but I'm really, really excited to be with all of you. And I want to talk to you about... Um, I want to talk to you about crafting a new body by focusing on results, but I want it to be easy. I was thinking about how do we make focusing on results easy? And hi, Barbara. Hi, everybody who's popping in. So happy to have you joining me today. Happy Wednesday. Barbara, you're always so nice and early and on time and so good to see you each week. Um, so here's what I want you to do as you're thinking about what you want for your body. I want you to ask yourself, are you clear? Are you clear of what you want for your body, how you want it to look, how you want to feel? And then I want you to think about something. I want you to think about, okay, so here on one hand, let's make this hand. Here's your body that you want. And on the other hand, what is getting in the way of you having that body? So often we tell ourselves it's our whole way we're showing up with food and it's not true. We make it mean that it's we're entirely broken and that is 100% false. When I talk to women every single day, every single week, I hear so many good things that they're doing that they're not even recognizing, they're not even celebrating, they're not even honoring. But there are things, there are just a few, three to five tweaks most of you could make to really hunker in and make a big difference on your weight, big difference with your body, but it's not everything. You're not broken entirely when it comes to food. I know it feels like that. But most of the time, it's three o'clock to eight o'clock or eight o'clock on, or dinner time overeating, or emotionally eating here and there. It's not everything. Most people don't struggle for breakfast. Some people do, I get it. If you're one, I get it. But most people don't. So stop thinking you're entirely broken in the area of weight and your body, you are not. But I want you to think about something. I wrote down this question for you. I want you to think about what would you do differently if you knew six weeks from now you could be 10 pounds down. If you could be 10 pounds lighter in four to six weeks, what would you need to do? And I want you to share with me, feel free. Hi, Diane, so happy to have you. Share with me, what would you do differently? Because you can't be showing up the same way. It's true. But you're not entirely broken. That's also true. So there's somewhere in the middle that is where your transformation lies. It's somewhere in the middle. And I'll tell you, it starts here. It always starts with your mind. It always starts with your thinking. It always starts with the words that you're saying. And then... It's celebrating what you're doing. I'm seeing way too many women out there who are getting great results and not celebrating. Like you lose five, 10 pounds. My inner circle members losing five, 10, 15, 20 pounds. Some of you are getting so, so, so good at celebrating, but others of you need to improve that. You'll say, oh, but I've got 15 more. I've heard people say this week alone, and you know who you are in my inner circle. You say this week alone, you say, I'm down five pounds, but I think the scale's broken. 
you won't even give yourself the the success of having the scale be right and we do that so knock it off start celebrating so if you knew you could be down 10 pounds in the next four to six weeks what would have to show up differently is it late night eating is it emotional eating is it overeating those are usually the three big pieces i like to look at emotional eating overeating late night eating those three tend to be things that could really be getting in the way so what needs to occur what needs to shift one thing you could do that would be so simple in theory i know it's a little more complicated in action what if you just left a little bit on your plate every single meal every meal you're eating your yogurt and you're like here's two two little spoonfuls you're having a sandwich and you leave a little crust you're having some steak or chicken or a salad and you leave a little see our systems don't have to be hard to get you good results you're making it too hard i was realizing this in myself when i've always moved my body but i've never been uh, consistent at it i've never been like somebody every single week four times a week i move my body no it looks more like every single week something goes on and it's totally inconsistent it might be once it may be four times it may be none it may be then right it's never been consistent and i've wanted to get more consistent and I was realizing in my head, and I know some of you do this also, you're all or nothing. I was realizing that if I said to myself, let's just go on a walk every morning, and then my dog Harley gets a walk in, I feel really good, I listen to podcasts I love, I feel inspired for the day for all of you, for my inner circle, for my private clients, I'm just ready to rock and roll for you. But somehow in my head, I was thinking it's not enough. Which really translates more to me as like, it's not enough. I'm not enough, right? I'm not enough. It's not enough. I can't do it. It won't make a big enough difference, yada, yada, yada. But I also know that movement begets more movement. Movement creates more movement. The more consistent I am with walking, the more I want to step it up and then jog and then go for longer distance and then do a class and yada, 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 right? It goes on and on and on. But because I was thinking walking wasn't good enough, I and I really should do what's harder. And we talked about this last week, getting rid of the shoulds and the butts because they make you have bigger butts. Then that's a problem it's a problem so i was like this is not okay so what do i want to do and all of you need to think about this if you have a goal to lose 10 pounds in the next four to six weeks or whatever it is in two months i don't care what it is what is realistic for you i was making movement unrealistic and so i never wanted to show up and do it but when I created this whole amazing plan in my head where I was like, I'm going to get up, I'm going to put on my, my workout clothes, I'm going to take my dog out for a walk, I'm going to listen to my awesome you know, podcast I love or a book I'm reading or whatever for my book group, and I'm just going to feel inspired, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to have my coffee that's going to be kind of my treat for myself, and that's gonna feel great i'll eat breakfast with the kids so the kids aren't gonna feel left out or like i'm i won't feel bad that i'm like neglecting them or anything like that well they'll sit down for breakfast whether i'm hungry or not i'll eat with them i started to play this out and, and i started to attach really positive emotions this is realistic i can do this if you tell me to go do a bunch of burpees right now, I may be like, mm, not going to happen. But to go for a walk, and I know the dog's getting a walk in, and it's been wonderful. So I got to keep it up. I want to keep it up. That's the difference. It's not a have to. It's not a should. It's a want to. 
So how can you turn your shoulds and have tos and musts into want tos and get tos? It's a really important question to ask yourself because it doesn't have to be hard. You don't have to feel like you have to do anything, but when you want to do something or when you're excited to do it and you're looking forward to it and I see all the benefits of going on this walk, my dog gets a walk, I get fresh air, I get to have some peace away from the fam, I have time by myself, I get to learn, I feel inspired, I will come up with, I know, inspiration that will help all of you. It's a win, 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 win. My walk has then turned into this massive win for all of us. So what could you do to turn your have tos and musts and shoulds into get tos and want to? Right? That Cynthia, I love you saying, I'd have to restrict. What if you don't have to put that in your head? What do you want instead? It's not about restriction. You wouldn't have to restrict. What would you want to do to get those 10 pounds off in the next four to six weeks? What do you want to do? What would feel good to do? What would be exciting to do and enjoyable to do? And inspiring for your body and your mind. For those of you like Diane, late night eating, like really looking at, okay, we're saying, hey, kitchen clothes. I'm excited to go on a walk after dinner. I'm excited to watch a show and snuggle into my bed or the couch and get all cozy with a cup of lemon water or a bubbly and just enjoy my night. See, if we get excited by using our mind about what a hard area could look like instead, but you got to get, you, you, it can't be fake. It can't be phony. Or you're just going to throw a middle finger up at the whole thing. You're going to be like, screw this. It can't be fake and phony. It's got to be real. You've got to really want something. You've got to really see it happen. I could literally see myself getting up in the morning and instead of saying, Marna, get up at 5.30, you know what I'm telling myself? Marna, get up at 7, 7.30, go for a walk. 5.30 felt exhaust, like miserable for me. And maybe one day I'll get there. But listen, it's summer and I my kids are off school, so let me look at the realistic world I'm in right now. Okay, 7.30, great. That feels realistic. That feels doable. That's not hard. 5.30 felt hard. I would resist that. But 7.30, not resisting it. Feels good, feels doable, feels exciting. So I tell you my story not to be obnoxious and only talking about myself, but I tell you it to share that I continue to have Resistance too, we all do. You will always have resistance, whether you're 50 pounds lighter, 100 pounds lighter, or 40 pounds lighter, wherever you're at, there will be resistance that comes up. The key to moving through resistance is looking at what do you want it to look like instead? How can you make it fun? How can you make it enjoyable? How can you gamify it a bit? Turn the shoulds into want tos, get tos like to so that you don't Cynthia have to restrict so that Diane nighttime eating gets easier so Bridget emotional eating shifts okay what is that guilt about eating Becca let's not have any more guilt about eating let's transform it into joy and fun and within the container of living in a naturally thin body, within the container of honoring your hunger cues. Barbara, watch the word I need to be more consistent with exercise. Can you change it into, I want to be more consistent with exercise and hit, this is how it's going to look. If we have a plan, 
If you have a plan, you put it in your calendar, you make it happen. It's funny, you all made it happen right now. I know how powerful you are, all are. There's no question you're here. You made this happen. So if exercise is something you're not making happen, like I wasn't making happen the last several weeks, it's because in my head I was making it too hard. In my head I was making it something that I was not looking forward to, that I did not want to do, that was... I just didn't have a plan. Like I couldn't see how I was going to lift weights in a way that would be enjoyable at home. Or I couldn't find the class in my head that was going to work. But I could see walking every single morning. I could see it. I could plan for it. I can see that as I continue to enjoy walking, it could turn into walk jogging. It could turn into lots of things. It could turn into me doing lunges. But I love this time. And so why not just be okay with walking instead of it having to look any different? And at some point it may look different. Barbie says, I think that's why I have a problem with eating fast. The feeling of, I don't deserve this. You don't deserve to have really great food when you're hungry that you love. Why the heck not? Hi, Danielle. So good to see you. Yes, Mary, you totally get to figure out different options for self-care. You get to decide how this is going to look. You get to decide how are you going to lose these next 10 pounds? How is it going to happen? But it doesn't have to be hard. You don't have to say, I'm never going to have this. I'm not having that. So many of you and so many diets do this. And it's why it doesn't work. And then you feel guilty when you don't eat the way the diet says you should. You feel guilty when you're going on a super high um, protein fat diet and then you have a carb and you had too many of them. Really? Really? Is that how you want to live? If that's how you want to live, I am not saying for sure, amen, go to town. But for many of us, why do we, we've been beating ourselves up with food for years and years and years. Why not just choose what you want and step into it lovingly, kindly, and when you go, oops, you just redirect yourself beautifully, (laughs) right? You just redirect yourself and go, oops, what happened? And get curious, not critical. What happened? What is that? What occurred? Why do I think I overate? What was that about? Oh, I just went unconscious. Okay, you just went unconscious. How do I bring a little more consciousness into my meals? Okay, I'm going to start putting my fork and food down between bites. Or every five bites, I'm going to take a big deep breath and just center myself and check in to see if I'm still hungry. You don't have to beat yourself up to get results, to lose weight. Is any kid or any anybody you love, like you wouldn't whip them into shape to get them to do exactly what you want them to do. You'd guide. You'd guide them lovingly, kindly, like your best friend. Stop t- talking to yourself like your worst enemy instead of your best friend. It doesn't work that way. We don't let our kids act that way. We don't beat our kids into submission. At least I don't. (laughs) Maybe you do. I'm just kidding. Um, You deserve to feel good in your body. I'm reading your post too here. I get it. Uh, Diane, same thing. I'm noticing that as things get warmer, I may need to rise earlier. But that's my choice, right? If I say to myself, I have to rise earlier because temperatures are getting hotter in the morning and I prefer to walk when it's not as hot. If if it feels like I have to, I'd rather it feel inside of me like a get to, a want to. If I put forth an idea like, oh, I'm going to leave food on my plate because I want to see if I can do it. Not because I have to, 
not because it's a rule forever that I have to follow and then I could resist that. No, I want to do it because I think it's fun to see if I can leave food on my plate because my eyeballs like to see a clean plate and wouldn't it be fun to see that there's still food left on my plate and I can enjoy a meal to my satisfaction and have food still on my plate. For some of you, losing 10 pounds in the next four to six weeks would just mean leaving food on your plate more often. That's it. For some of you, it would be taking a just a few less bites at meals. Others of you, it's just really hunkering into that hunger. Others of you, it's adding a little bit of movement, sweating a little bit. There's so many different ways you can lose your 10 pounds. What way do you want to lose it? What is exciting to you that you could put into place? I heard from somebody yesterday who's like, I just don't feel motivated. I keep losing motivation. Motivation is not a strategy. Not a strategy. It will never be. If we depend on motivation, really, I'm going to be all sorts of things. I'm like a freaking... You know, like this. I'm a circular human being. I'm never the same one day to the next. I don't know about you. Some of you are like even. I am not. I am the opposite. One day I'll be so inspired. The next day I'll be like, no, no, no. That if I depended on motivation, I would have never lost weight. I can't depend on motivation because my motivation will go up and down depending on what my mood is and depending on life and depending on what's going on systems create freedom for me systems of honoring my body creates the ability for me to not have to depend on motivation it's just my way of showing up and being as i listen to my body plain and simple that's what happens and when i don't i look at it plain and simple it's it's a rule of my life that i love though i'm passionate about listening to my body I love it. I, it makes me feel so quote unquote normal and not fat and not out of harmony with food and not like a fat person trying to diet, right? I don't like that feeling. I like the feeling of feeling like a light person, a free person, a person who can choose and a person who's connected to her body. It makes me feel, I was watching Avatar the other day and I don't know if any of you have seen it lately, but I love that movie. Avatar is just so beautiful because really, I mean, it's, it's so layered on so many levels. I could take a whole class on Avatar and I'm sure there are classes looking at all the Native American aspects and all of these things. But the, the natives are so connected to the earth, so connected to their bodies. It's so beautiful. And I was watching it and I could almost cry I know people would think it's silly, but it's just so beautiful to be so connected into the earth, so connected to have things mean something for your body to be connected and for it to speak to you. It just moved me. It moved me to think about the fact that, wow, our bodies are so amazing. And when we listen to them and we honor them and we feel what they're feeling and we address our, our physical needs, by being one with them, it's so spiritual. It's it's like a religious experience. It's so beautiful. And it just, I was watching that and I just, I love that movie. That movie and Le Miserable are my two. I just love them. And Goodwill Hunting. That's an all-time favorite for me. But that, I just was like, I was just moved. I was so moved by that movie. Because honoring your body is like that. Being in connection and in alignment from mind, body, spirit is like that when it comes to food. Connecting in. It's not fight. It wasn't fight for the natives to listen to Mother Earth, listen to their bodies, to feel into their skin. It was a gift they were given. It was, a, it was something to be nurtured and enjoyed and, and loved and appreciated. Like how cool is that? so brilliant it's so beautiful yeah there is something Bridget Danielle that is so centering about honoring your body about when you really are connected to it 
and you're not out here all frenetic and worried, but you're in your skin and in your body that you can really be simmering in to losing weight, to feeling in connection. It's just so powerful. Yes, Lizzie, you're so cute. I really don't like diets either. And it's not that there's anything wrong with the people who are spouting diets and ways of being. Some people are so good at being able to be so rigid and strict with their diet. And God love them. Like, that is amazing. I am not. Maybe one day it'll look different. But for the last mm, 30 some years, it has not been that way for me. It has to come from within. It has to be inspiring. And listen, I'd love a salad. I love salmon. I love really good quality food. I love vegetables um, if they're prepared a certain way. Like I love all that stuff. But if I have to watch every little thing, it just takes my life energy out of me. It, it doesn't give me life energy like some people it does. It's some of those people who can stack macros and watch everything and dissect every little part of themselves. That is not interesting to me at all. There is nothing about that that feels freeing to me. That feels stifling and miserable. I want to be able to go to a restaurant and just get whatever I want. And knowing that I'm going to get whatever I want and I'm going to do it when I'm hungry and I'm going to have food that works well in my body that isn't going to cause me a great deal of pain because I don't want to be in pain because I want to live my life and enjoy my life. So I want to inspire all of you and then I'll take your questions. So feel free to post in here. I want to inspire all of you to think about what would it take to get 10 pounds off in the next four to six weeks? What would you want to do? What could you get to do? Have fun doing instead of putting strict, rigid, painful things that you're going to resist and then you're going to go over it because you've made this way too hard. What could you do? Feel free to write in the comment section. This is your journey. This should be your journey. This is the fun journey of losing weight to get results. Now, listen, I'm about results. I'm about getting you results. All of you have taken any of my stuff. You know, you get results. But you also know that this brain of yours is where we've got a master. And it keeps, it. it it's a tricky little bugger. It's a sneaky little bugger. It likes to come in and it likes to take you out of the game because it wants you to just be right where you are. It wants you nice and plump and comfy and not really having to do much but so we have to move with that inner self-talk that inner little sneaky part of ourselves not against that part we don't work against we work with with so that we're in harmony oh i love that diane you're eating at the table karen wrote Curious, not critical is my favorite. Good. <laughs> Lizzie said, I am enjoying the vision and that, that food is no longer an enemy to supposedly comfort and really to punish myself with. I'm so different inside now and it's inevitable I will lose more. That's the kind of thinking. It's inevitable that I will lose more. I love that thinking. You can't rely on willpower either. No. No. You love all those movies too? Yeah, they're my oh, goodwill hunting. I think because I always saw myself as a coach, therapist, like in that world, making a difference. I just like, I love that movie. That was like, that's my number one. And then I don't usually like Broadway shows that become musicals, but I really, really love Les Mis. I think I always watched Le Mis and I would go to the Broadway show and I kind of got it, but I didn't really get it until, I don't know, I feel like the last five, 10 years and I like really got the power of it, at least for me, what it means in my life. And I just love it. Um, 
Okay, when I lose my 10 pounds, I'd be so much more fit for my kickboxing class. Woo -woo! Yeah, Danielle, nice. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think I would be able to, able to leave a bit or two every time I eat. Okay, Kate, you said, I think. In that, if any of you are doing this, if you're saying something like, I think I might be able to, I want to make sure, are you committed? When I hear I think, it's like, mm, kind of one toe in, one toe out. So that tells me you're not quite sure. So come up with something that you really see that you could do. Really. Like that you feel really, pat. like I want to just make sure that you feel really committed. Okay, to whatever it is, so that you don't feel like you're half in, half out. This is so great, you guys. Great job. I love this. Love this, Tam. Love this. Laura, Beth, awesome. Great. Mary, you agree? Yes. Um... I only have one toe in to give at this time. Great. Got it. Got it. Got it. You just got a little pinky. You got a little pinky toe that you're, that you're able to give right now. Great. Great. I think that's great. And I think that's real and knowing where you're at. And you are showing up for these. And that is amazing. And let me just continue to inspire you in the inner circle and in here. That's what I want for you. Great, great, great. So I love this. I need to commit to. Ah, Barbara, I want you to watch the need word. I need to. I want to. Any of you that are saying needs, have to, shoulds, really, I really want to see if you can start shifting them to want tos, get tos, excited to. Because that's the energy. Why can't we make weight loss fun? Why does it have to be so dang hard? Why does it have to be so serious? Why do we have to be so in pain? Some of you are looking back. You're like, I used to be that person. I used to. Okay, that's awesome. You used to be that person. You are amazing right now and you can get to wherever you want to go. Just because you used to be doesn't mean you can't. But if you keep hanging out, really only hunkering down into the past, it's not going to make you feel very good because you're right now. Like, here's where you're at right now. It doesn't matter what to, led you to this. It's, it doesn't matter. Life happens, crap happens, things happen. It's okay. It's okay. Now you're here and you wanna go there into the future. So let's get you there. But let's not put a lot of woulds, shoulds, have tos, musts, rules, and a 20 different things that you're gonna do because I will tell you, you are gonna fail and that is gonna drive you bonkers and it's gonna make things too hard. Pick one or two things, that's it, that you're committed to doing. That's it, that's all you need to do. That's it and get amazing, like get, get so good at those few things and the, until they become your you. See, here's the thing what I want you to know. You have the conscious brain and you have the unconscious brain. Your conscious brain is responsible for 5% of everything you do. Your unconscious brain, or roughly about, your unconscious brain is responsible for 95% of what you do. Those are your habits. Those are the things you do automatically. Those are the things when you find yourself staring at the fridge and going, oh crap. I'm not even hungry. Habit brain, unconscious brain, two-year-old brain, okay? Your brain works to take consciously what you do and put it back in storage, Keep right? So you cannot focus on a million different things at a time. You can't. Your brain, it's just not wired that way. You can't focus on too many things because your brain is the most sophisticated machine. Now you can try, but only so much will get in and get into memory, into unconscious, where your habits are. 
So if we pick one or two things to hunker, hunker, hunker down on, to focus with all your might until they become your habit, then you leave, okay, great. Okay, those two things are done now. Okay, phew. Now we're gonna focus on a few different other things. Okay, work really, really hard on those things. Back into habit brain, right? But too many things, working out, eating when hungry, stopping, avoiding emotional eating, feeling my feelings, right? It's a lot, and I give you a lot, and I recognize that. And I wanna give you so much because I just am so passionate about giving you so much. And it's your job then to say, okay, I'm learning a lot. And these are the two things I'm focusing on because I want to, because I'm excited to, because I feel so powerful in doing that. And I like to focus on the things that are the easiest and will get me the best results. Why not? Seems reasonable, right? The easiest. So this last month in the inner circle, we've been hunkering down because the inner circle members, you all told me, hey, I want to focus on late night eating, please. Let's focus there because that's where we're struggling, cravings after dinner. And we came up with all different systems. And we focused on everybody has one or two. That's it that they're focused on because that's where the struggle is. Next month in June, as we have coming up, oh my God, just a couple more days. We're going to head into June and I'm going to do some really cool stuff around. We're going to talk about why you say you're going to do something and then you don't follow through. We're going to look at really getting clear of why you even want to lose weight because some of you are not clear and getting, I have some, some things to work through. That I'm really excited about. So if you are not in the inner circle, there's an opportunity. The inner circle is now a paid place to be. It's the only way I can actually make a living. I was I love giving you all myself for free. I love giving away podcasts and Wednesdays. And the only way that I can continue to do this work and inspire all of you is actually if I make some money. So now it is a paid inner circle. I want you there. It is powerful. It is an amazing group of women, amazing group of women who are supporting. There's a few men who are supporting, connecting, loving on each other all the time. If you are not part of that inner circle, consider it. Consider it. It's $37 a month right now. Like, hello? I can't even. It's less than $10 a week. It's like what you would pay to go and have one spinning class. Or one meal. Come on. And you get a whole group of people. And you get me. And you get me focused on you. Come on. I can't make it any easier. So if you want details as to how to do that, let me know. I'll let you know how to do that. I'll put it underneath. If I do the podcast, I'll, I'll let you know. But that, probably the best thing, because I haven't made it available for everybody, is to reach out to me. Let me know if that's something you want. I'd love to help you. Okay, so you're going to ask yourself this question. What would I do differently if I knew I could be down 10 pounds in the next four to six weeks? The thing that I want you to think about, what's easy, what's fun, what's doable. Easy, fun, doable. You're going to focus on just one or two things. That's it. Don't go shiny object me. Don't go saying I'm going to do these two things and tomorrow comes and you find two more things. And then the next day comes and you find two more things. Knock that off. You are not going to get results. I'll tell you why. I did this with my business. I would be like, oh, I should do this. Oh, I should do that. No, and then I wasn't doing any, I wasn't doing anybody any good. Focus, focus on doing one thing really, really, really well. Get that in from your focused conscious brain to your unconscious brain. Then when you're like, this is now a habit. This is who I am. This is part of my identity. This is how I show up. Then you can bring it to another strategy and another tactic. 
Okay? Okay. So I don't want you leaving today without knowing the two things that you're excited to focus on. That's doable, that's easy, that's fun. Okay? Because I'm committed to you getting those darn pounds off in the next four to six weeks. Let's make this happen. But I can't do it for you. I wish I could, but I can't do it for you. So I'm just going to give you everything in my brain that I know about brain science, about emotional eating, about overeating, and about doing this work that I've done my whole entire career for the last 20 some years. So you know what to do. Go make it happen. And I can't wait, can't wait to hear your results. All right. All right, see what happens when I go on a walk? See, Tam, you're so cute. I'm so happy to have you in the inner circle, Tam. I'm really excited to have you. Janie's so excited to have you. Oh, I love it. I'm glad you feel your confidence building. So, so, so happy. I love Karen, you saying you're an athlete now. Can we just talk about Karen right now? <laughs> Karen, whether you like it or not, I'm going to talk about you. I mean, she went from like not like really feeling athletic to being like, the transformation is unbelievable. Like she is kicking major butt. She puts me to shame. She is like working out, moving her body, going, doing. Woo! I love it. I love to see what's possible in just a few short months. She's making this happen. She's totally dedicated to herself. It's incredible, incredible. Um, Danielle, you said, I think I'm focusing on eating when hungry and exercising. Okay. Now hear the difference between, I think I'm focusing on eating when hungry and exercising <laughs> and, and hear this instead. I'm excited, I'm passionate this week to focus on eating only when my body's hungry and moving my body three times this week. See the difference versus I think I'm focusing on eating when hungry. See the power difference, you hear it? I think still puts a, it puts a space between you and your dreams versus bring it in. I'm going to focus on eating when hungry and only eating when I'm hungry and moving my body three times this week. And, it's, and I'm going to, and just know what that's going to look like. I'm going for a walk every single morning at 830 or whatever it might be. That's the difference. When you are clear, your brain can clearly go where you want it to go. But if you're like, I think I will maybe, you're putting it at a distance. Your goals are still out there. You haven't fully committed, which is okay. Let's find the thing you want to commit to. You are excited to commit to. You want to make happen. Do you feel that difference? So Barbara, if you don't want to eat simple sugars, the thing that I would encourage you to do is focus on what are you going to eat? I am so excited to eat X, Y, Z. You see the difference? If I, if I was to focus on not having sugar, the only thing your brain focuses on is simple sugar. But if you focus on, I am so excited this week to have steak and chicken and whatever you want, big old salads with lots of yummy protein and veggies that I love, then your brain can start seeing that. And all of a sudden, simple sugar goes back there. So I just want to encourage that as a brain thing to do. If any of you are giving up certain foods, that's okay as long as you focus your brain properly. If you're constantly thinking about, oh, I wanted my simple sugar. I really love my simple sugar. I love sugar. I'm so deprived. Because this week I committed to not having sugar, right? If you're in that energy, it's going to, don't give up sugar then. If you're in the energy of, I am so excited, I'm going to eat this and this, and these are the things I'm going to have and have ways to get my, my yummy sweetness in and with dates and whatever other way you want to make it happen, your brain can see it. Okay. It's a difference. It's a, it's a subtle difference, but it's a difference. Is there a difference between the unconscious brain and the subconscious? Same thing. Tam, great question. Inner two-year-olds, I kind of use them kind of loosely all over the place. Inner two-year-old, subconscious, unconscious, all the same. 
okay? The thing is, is we have these amazing brains that also have really primitive wiring as well. We have advancement and we have primitive all working together. The primitive wants us to be away from pain. It wants us to run from tigers. It wants to, us to be fat and juicy and plumpy so that we have reserves. God forbid we should starve. Right? That's the, it's part of our primitive brain. So we have to work in the modern way with this primitive, primitive wiring. And so I do that in a way and I teach you and train you that in a way to help you bring these two in harmony and hopefully give you the tools in a modern way to deal with a rewiring that's old. So I hope that helps. Yep, yep, Tam, that is exactly right. My husband is working on that also. We found a new sweetener called Lucuma powder. Ooh, I've never heard of Lucuma. I've heard of a lot of things. I have swerve, I have monk fruit extract, but I've never heard of lucuma. I'm gonna focus on leaving one or two bites on my plate at every meal and drink more water, says Roberta. Roberta, are you excited by that? Are you liking that? Is that something that you wanna do? I just wanna make sure, just making sure. Haha, <laughs> Barbara M, yes it is. Um, I'm glad you guys love this. Rode 27 miles and love it. Oh my gosh. Amazing. I, yep. The thing with Karen is she fell last week and her ride yesterday was three miles. She fell and she ended up in the hospital and now she got to get back up. And so I told her, don't push it. Don't go crazy. Um, Lizzie, I could not give up sugar or will rebel. Fine. So permission, permission, permission is important to you. All right. You know the things to focus on. You know where you're going. I love you guys. I love being with you. This makes me so, so, so happy to share this work with you, to have you stepping up into your new way of being and have you step into, you can step into this weight loss. Don't give in to that old crap. Don't give in to your old beliefs. Don't give in to that old wiring. But you have to focus. You have to focus. Just a couple things, and they need to be something you want, you enjoy, you love doing, so that that's realistic, so that you actually make it happen, okay? So make it happen. I can't wait to hear your results. All right, everybody. Big, big, big hugs. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you all next week for my Facebook Live, and I'll have more goodies to share with you. Bye, everyone.